Hi and welcome once again to Reflections. This is a 15 minute broadcast designed to inspire, encourage and be a blessing to you. As I've said many times in the past, all the while keeping our finger on the pulse of reality. And we trust that as I share this broadcast today that you will indeed be challenged in your spirit as we're dealing with another attribute of God. And this one is, this one is a big one. Uh, it is that God is holy. And so in 15 minutes, I will try my best to convey to you a little bit of understanding of the holiness of God. This is one that has really challenged me. I have to admit that. And I was looking for a way to present it to you in a way that we could truly understand and comprehend the holiness of God. Well, I've got some ideas and I trust that I'll be able to present them to you in a way that you can appreciate and in a little better way understand not just the fact that God is holy but his other attributes as well. We've looked at several of them in the past many weeks and we've got a few more to look at and again as the Lord gives us that liberty we will share on them. But today we are looking at the fact that God's characteristic is Holiness. God is a holy God. He is infinitely, unchangingly perfect. Uh, in the book of Revelation, there's a, a beautiful hymn that we've sung for many years. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And you can find that actually in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. God is indeed a holy God. And the word holy means sacred or set apart or revered or divine and and yet none of these words truly adequately capture the awesome holiness of god john macarthur a famous preacher and bible scholar writes that uh, god's holiness is one of the attributes of god that is the most uniquely uh, descriptive of who he is he says the word holiness refers to his separateness his otherness the fact that he is unlike any other being it indicates his complete and infinite perfection now this will make a little more sense to you as i go on and share in this little broadcast but i was seeking for different ways to present to you the holiness of god and i i saw a one little description uh, in just two words and i thought well this seems to indicate really and truly how God is holy and that is that he is blindingly pure blindingly pure some of you who live in cold countries where there's snow uh, you hear about snow blindness it is that the, the UV rays are so bright that you literally temporarily go blind you, you get snow blind well in our neck of the woods it is the sunshine the, the bright beautiful sunshine that we have even though we've not been having a whole lot of it of, re of late we've been getting a lot of rain but if you were to make the mistake to go outside and stare at the sun to look at the sun for too long a period of time it would literally blind you well essentially God is this seems to be talking about his glory but his holiness is such that you know you, you cannot you cannot truly look at it and comprehend it and understand it. It is just so magnificent. Uh, and so when we were talking about God being sacred, being set apart, revered, divine, these are these are qualities that, that as human beings, especially fallen creatures, I'll come to this again shortly, that we, we find it really difficult to understand. But this is who God is. He is blindingly pure so pure that if you gaze at him long enough it will send you blind uh that god, god is holy it means that he is he's he's completely immutably we talked about that was one of the first attributes to talk about he doesn't change so he's completely immutably infinitely perfect he doesn't change he is absolutely perfect and he is perfect forever all the time that uh, sounds like you're repeating yourself, but you understand where I'm coming from. So his, his absolute purity falls under his consummate displeasure. Anything, anything, let me make this point clear. 
anything that is not pure like he is falls under his consummate displeasure and, and and beloved i know i know that i'm teaching you and sharing with you about the attributes of god but as i have gone through this particular attribute that god is holy it began to open other things to my understanding regarding his attributes not just the fact that he is holy but in reality because he is so holy because he is the essence of of purity then anything outside of purity is an issue for him so let's look at it let's look at it a little bit from from the word of god in matthew 5 verse 48 it says that that be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect so because he is perfect and because anything that is let's say imperfect uh, uh he cannot deal with he also requires us to be perfect but we have to put that in a way that is reachable and understandable because we cannot be completely pure as he is so i looked into the amplified bible and it says you therefore must be perfect growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and in character having reached a proper height of virtue and integrity as your heavenly father is perfect so our maturity in mind in godliness in character that our mind is godly our thoughts are godly our character our actions are godly meaning like god we 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 have in a human sense the opportunity to be perfect but if i could put it this way in human terms perfection for human beings is not absolute purity it's more of a an absolute maturity it's it's a little different when you're dealing with god and when you're dealing with us we are to be uh reflections of his absolute purity but we as long as we're in our sinful uh bodies we cannot be absolutely perfect but here's what we need to appreciate and i think all of you can appreciate when i say this that is why we need christ without christ without jesus taking the place for us dying for our sins on the cross of calvary we would all fall way short of god's holy standard it's like when i i first went to secondary school in barbados i had a big brother who was in fourth form uh, he was in uh, in barbados you wear gray and white when you go into fourth form in the lower uh, forms the uniform is um khaki or khaki as some people call it but so i hear my little boy little freshman in this school and i have a big brother four and a half years almost five years older than i am so while i was a a, a newbie in in every way and while i was young and small in frame the reality is i was covered by the fact of an older stronger more mature brother who was resident at the same school that i was so anyone that dealt with me dealt with me with the understanding that i had a bigger brother who would defend and look out and take care of me when jesus died on a cross in a sense that he kind of covered us like a big brother would cover a little brother in in any type of scenario so when when the father looks to us and he sees maybe some things that are out of place Jesus steps in and says I've covered that I've taken care of that you can look at that through my holiness look at it through the lens of who I am that's that's a little way of trying to c- communicate to you how the Lord deals with our shortcomings our imperfections and our lack of holiness but we must be we must strive to be mature strive to be as much as possible like our pure holy heavenly father no no listen to this and and you won't catch it but but listen to it and you can go back and 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 listen to it a couple of times so you understand but when i personally consider god's holiness his absolute purity i begin to to comprehend god's justice because he is so pure he is 
just. Uh, he, can't, he can't be anything but just because he is holy. It, it actually makes sense to me. Uh, on, on one side, because he is holy, then he is and has to be a God of wrath. Because he cannot deal with anything that is not pure, that is not holy, that is sinful, that falls short. Because he is absolutely pure. So on one side, the holiness of God, the justice of God, the wrath of God, they are inseparable. They, they, are, they are united in such a way that you cannot separate one from the other. God's wrath is his complete disdain for whatever is unclean. And I can see why he, he completely has no tolerance for sin, because he is absolutely pure. Sin goes against every fiber of his absolutely perfect or holy, pure being. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about God's wrath, because as I said earlier, we are covered through the death, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ he sits on the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for the saints of God. So he paid the price for our sins. He covered our impurities. And now he has given to us his pure righteousness. On the other side, I'm beginning to understand through the holiness of God that I can trust him to keep his word. I can trust him to deal with me fairly and faithfully. His holiness causes me to, to just catch a glimpse of the absolute integrity of the things that he says, his words, his promises. Because he is holy, he is unable to lie. He is unable to make a false promise. He is unable to break his word or deal with me any other way than perfectly uprightly. Because he is holy, he is perfectly good. He is perfectly loving. He is perfectly trustworthy. Fallen nature cannot truly comprehend perfect purity or holiness. We just do not understand it. But His holiness gives me a new understanding of the cross. Why He went to the cross and the value of the cross. It gives me a new understanding of His law. If He is a perfect, pure, holy God, then His law must reflect who he is. His works are all rooted in the fact that he is holy. He is pure, absolutely so. His judgment, all his judgments are pure. His heart, his love for mankind, and indeed his love for me come out of absolute purity, absolute holiness. And all of his other attributes like grace and mercy and faithfulness, all of those attributes spring forth from the fact that God is absolutely pure, holy, divine, separate. There is none like him. And so out of this divine nature, out of this pure nature, out of this perfect nature, God's dealings with me, God's dealings with the earth, God's dealings with mankind, God's dealings with his people are always and there can never be anything other than absolutely upright, trustworthy, and completely dependable. So you never have to think or worry that you get a raw deal with God. You never have to Fear that he will treat you unjustly. It answers actually the question that I've been dealing with on the Sunday morning broadcast. And that is, uh, why would God allow bad things to happen to his children? But when you understand his holiness, when you understand that he is perfect, absolutely pure, you know that any dealings he has with you, me, with anybody else on the face of the earth, Christian and non-Christian, must conform to the fact that he is absolutely pure, holy, just, righteous, good, loving, kind. He is all these things to a fault. And therefore, thank God he is a holy God. And thank God that Jesus died for our sins, that we can approach a holy God. And he will look upon us with favor 
with grace and with love. May God bless you as you ponder on the holiness of God, the absolute purity of God, and that your life conforms to all that God is and all that God expects you to be. We'll see you next Thursday with another Christmas reflections. God bless you. Have a great day.